all right guys welcome back to the channel thanks for tuning in thanks for watching of course thanks for subscribing truly appreciate the support happy new year to all we're starting off 2024 on a good note hopefully uh test driving out uh, fsd beta 11.4.9 which is supposed to be the precursor to version 12 which should be coming soon it's in the hands of employees right now and should be coming soon but we're testing out version 11.4.9 right now um, we've been away for a little bit, so we weren't able to test out when it actually came out, but we are testing it now. We're not doing our normal path today um, just because uh, we're pretty bummed out about the NHTSA changes that were made to autopilot and FSD beta. We were away for a while with our X driving long distances on uh, autopilot, enhanced autopilot, and found it to be much less useful than it normally would be. Uh, without the changes for NHTSA and the changes specifically are increased steering wheel nags and increased driver monitoring system for the eyes to pay attention the, for the camera to pay attention to what your eyes are doing. Um, I've said it before and I, I'll still stay to it that it should be either or if my hand is on the wheel of the yoke, then it shouldn't be as scrutinizing with the camera for my eyes. I should be able to look away, look down because I can still react with my hand on the yoke or wheel. No different than anyone driving and taking their eye off the road for a moment, specifically on long, monotonous highway drives where not a lot of cars are around, right? Um, or if my hand is off the yoke or the wheel for a brief minute, second, a couple of seconds, it should pay attention to where my eyes are. If my eyes and hands are off the yoke or wheel, then it should ding me, it should alert me, it should bring, you know, it, sh it should penalize me for not paying attention or not being uh, compliant with the system. However, the new change now is doubling down on both. So you have to have your hand on the yoke or wheel and you have to have your eyes on the road, which, me, which, is, which seems fine until you actually try to do something on the touch screen. If you try to do something on the touch screen, modify your navigation, whatever the case may be, um, then it becomes a problem. Uh, this has been the, the main problem we've suffered uh, driving with this long distances on the highway uh, is being able to like modify the navigation. And if you take your eyes off the, off the road or put your hands on the screen for, you know, 10 seconds, it's going to beep at you. And it's going to continually beep at you as long as you're not paying attention in terms of having your eyes on the road and your hand on the wheel simultaneously. Um, that again, just makes it less useful. It makes it mean, it means that it's going to uh, require more focus than actually driving yourself. In which case the, the, the benefit of autopilot is, is ultimately negated uh, in these instances, specifically for long highway drives. Okay, so we've not been happy with that. And that's probably the main reason why we're not really gonna test this down our, our regression path. Um, so we're just gonna go ahead and test it out, doing a new path, uh, seeing how it fares. I didn't mean to do that, but it was kind of creeping up. not faring too well um but yeah that's been the biggest issue right um so if you have this version uh let me know your thoughts in the comments what you think about the increased nags is it a problem for you is autopilot still usable for you haven't really tested fsd beta because we're just now getting back into town um so this will be one of our first few runs on fsd beta for 11.4.9 to see what that nag looks like but my eyes are always on the road specifically when we're using fsd beta now, if you said that level of scrutiny was for FSD beta specifically for city streets, okay, maybe. But for highway, which has always been a very valuable asset, and one of the benefits of having a Tesla is being able to leverage that autopilot system, um, which allows you to be able to have a hand on the wheel, take your eyes off the road, taking some of the scenery of the places you might be trying to go, uh, you can't do that now. You absolutely cannot do that, and the system will penalize you the longer you look at the screen. And that makes it a little harder specifically for, I think, Model 3 and Model Ys where this is your only screen. So if you're always looking at the screen to check your speed, to check other things in the car, the system gonna, is going to pin you. Model S and X, the instrument panel's here. So as we look down, it's not really uh, uh, monitoring us as looking all away from the road. It's having us look at, it, it probably assumes we're looking at the road. 
So it seems to be uh, okay there. But if you have to do anything with the screen, modify your trip, adjust your trip, look for restaurants nearby, anything that has to do with touching the screen, adjust something for a prolonged period of time. And I mean, a matter of 10 seconds or more, it will get you. It will definitely get you. So not a, not a huge fan of that uh, update. Hopefully there's a way that um, Tesla can remedy this while still satisfying the needs of NHTSA and ultimately making a safer system. Extra caution around this pedestrian. That's a good job. Title and turn, but still precise, which is good. Um, but so far, I've noticed that this build is building off of um, the previous build, which is effectively, um, you know, 11.4.8.1, which is pretty solid. Pretty solid build. Hand on the wheel there my, is my warning. Um, but it's a pretty pretty solid build. I'm going to actually hold this the way that I normally do when I'm not trying to showcase <laughs> FSD beta, just hold the wheel just so I don't have to keep getting these um, these nags, uh, especially if I look, decide to look off the road, away from the road for a second. But yeah, I mean, it's effectively the same scenario as 11.4.8.1, uh, just with the addition of the NHTSA protocols, if you will, for enhanced uh, driver monitoring. Uh, we'll see what else happens. I'll try to bump up the speed a little bit. Still smooth, still solid where it was solid so far. Still use the same level of precaution for pedestrians, which is great. Still feels very human-like when doing the basic maneuvers. Um, however, it does seem like it can still throw a little bit of a, 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 a curveball every now and again with certain maneuvers. Okay. Again, my, my eyes are on the road. And if my hand is off like this, it should allow me to do this as long as my eyes are on the road. If my eyes are off the road, hand on the wheel, hand on the yoke. And that's the way I can stay compliant, but also that's the way I can stay ready. Okay, so <clears throat> everybody has sources. Everybody knows people. Uh, our sources say that uh, uh, version 12 is going well. The testing is going well, at least by their accounts. Um, may be able to release to first wave customers uh, in the next couple of weeks or even sooner. I know they're trying to rush it out to get it out before the end of the year. I don't think that's going to happen, uh, but it's looking promising. Now, obviously, whenever Tesla introduces a new technology or a new strategy of technology, be it going from autopilot one to autopilot two to navigate on autopilot or hardware one, two, three, four, there's a little bit of a regression curve that needs to be overcome where before you see the significant gains of that approach, you start to see, you know, some rudimentary uh, regression to how it functions. And it may not seem drastically better than what you uh, what you previously have seen. And that's OK. And I expect that from V12. I don't expect V12 to be AI, completely AI minus 300,000 lines of code and completely driving around like it's a human on day one. Um, I think it's going to take some time. I think it's going to mirror and mimic what we're seeing with this uh, version 11. Uh, and then it'll start to grow beyond that and get better over time. Strong break. Not as quick of a rebound as I would like, but it did break strong, uh, give a good distance for the car turning, but it should have got back up to speed quickly. That's one of the things that 11.4.8 uh, uh, was able to do. Good job waiting for this car. I got a funky little turn here where I have to uh, make, a, <laughs> make a right to make a left onto the road up here. And it's a little bit of an unprotected left, a little bit more high stakes than we normally deal with. So I'm going to be extra vigilant here, see what the car does in terms of taking its time, see what it does in terms of getting out and staging this turn or peeking out to get far enough where the cameras are. Traffic is not terrible. It's wide open it can go. Go, 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 go. Now it can't go because the car is coming. I'm going to let it do its thing. Creeping up visibility. And it goes. Good job. Let's 
So far, so good. Again, really, the real bummer for us is, is the NHTSA change for driver monitoring. Um, I think there there are powers that in, that be that are trying to slow down the progress of Tesla, and I get that they may just speculation and, and my my theory they may be having a hand in this. Um, I don't think it changes fundamentally how the system works. I don't think uh, you know the incidents that happened were a result of people, you know, not being alerted enough. I think people are are, are effectively people, uh, and there's certain I'm not discounting the situations, the accidents, the incidents that happen. But I think in most cases, people are people and they may lean more heavily on the technology than it's capable of. And that might have might have been the case, not certainly, but might have been the case. If it was an accident and it did something crazy, we've all seen it. I've got a curb rim. It took a turn too tight. Um, we've seen the phantom veering onto oncoming traffic. Now, if it was one of those situations, I'm, I'm happy to say that, hey, we've seen something similar to that where it kind of thought about doing that, didn't quite commit. But it definitely did think about doing that. So that's a real situation that I think, you know, could warrant some investigation. But, uh, you know, for anything beyond that, I think it's more a matter of, um, you know, people being people uh, and misusing the system and then trying to use the blame. And I think that's the real reason why Tesla didn't, you know, do what was speculated of them when they first thought about rolling something out like that was just taking the blame for. Um, what happens on autopilot and a lot of manufacturers, not just Tesla, like who takes the blame if your car is driving by itself and gets into an accident? Does Tesla take the blame? Does the manufacturer take the blame or does the person take the blame? In this instance, they want the person to take the blame and this guy's walking on a green light. Car was going to go for it. I stopped it. I'm okay with that. Let me get back here. Re-engage, go 40. Let's see what happens. So anybody driving, uh, operating, I should say, I feel like you go from driving to operating where you are actually supervising the car. And in the instance of operating, you're in control, you're responsible, it's your car effectively. And whoever owns the car is the one responsible for it. Extra, extra sensitive with these nags now. It's like really, really frequent. And again, for me, it was the highway autopilot eyes on the road can't look at the screen it's really a problem i can't say it enough i know i've said it like five times already but that's really really bringing down the value or the usefulness of highway autopilot So see, as it keeps uh, bugging me, I'm just going to keep my hand here, keep it compliant, and just see how it performs. I'm not going to mess around. It's just getting super annoying. Um, after having a small stint of no-nag drives on FSD beta, it really, it really doesn't even compare um, in terms of um, just being comfortable in the car and letting the car do its thing. To have to look at the look around, supervise the car, make sure it's doing well, and have your hand on the yoke and pay attention to the road and keep these things silent, these these, uh, these uh, messages compliant um, is not as enjoyable. I'll just say it that way. All right, so since this is going to be, this is effectively my last drive of 2023, and you guys are seeing this probably first thing in 2024, um, I wanted to give my thoughts really quickly because you guys have been really hitting me up about the Cybertruck. I didn't get a chance to give my thoughts. I didn't get a chance to go to the event, and it's supposed to go straight. That's not good. I got to flag that one. If I can actually flag it. Autopilot went left, went right when it was supposed to go straight. All right. Uh, as I was saying, um, I want to get my thoughts on Cybertruck. People have been asking me about Cybertruck. Um, I get, didn't get a chance to give the initial unveiling. I was supposed to go to that one. I was supposed to go to the launch event. Didn't get a chance to go. Family uh, take precedent. So... The idea is that um, when they first unveiled the Cybertruck, um, I thought it was a joke. I thought it was going to be like a cardboard facade that they were going to like knock down and reveal the real truck. And the design and, you know, the, the look of it just didn't really appeal to me. And it didn't appeal to me because I felt like they could do better. 
I felt like Franz and team, if you look at all their other designs and you think about what cyber punk or cyber would, you know, futuristic, post-apocalyptic, whatever you want to call it, would look like, I thought there were some different designs. I thought some designs up here, what I thought it could look like. I know the Hyundai N95 concept or something like that, that looked like a much better cyberpunk type of vehicle than the cyber truck. And one of the things I know that Tesla does as of late, as of after going through, you know, production hell, manufacturing hell, is they start to design things based upon how they can build them versus building, designing them wildly and then reigning in that design based on what they could actually build. And that's what most uh, car manufacturers do when it comes to um, concept designs. They design something wild and radical like uh, the, you know, Porsche Taycan or the Mercedes EQS. Um, and they basically rein it in for what's really realistic to produce. And Tesla does it the other way. They create designs now that are based on their manufacturer capabilities. That's why a lot of cars have the same parts, same look, same feel. Uh, and then Cybertruck is no different. They, they designed it based on, hey, how easy would it be to make this? It's hard to bend cold pressed, rolled stainless steel. So let's just make everything straight and angled. And even on a straight and angled perspective, I thought they could have done better. Um, I thought they could have made something radically different, uh, but also fitting in line with the Tesla DNA. And I feel like the Cybertruck just doesn't do that. It looks futuristic, it looks cool, in certain angles, certain lights, certain finishes, but it, ju it just doesn't feel like that's the best they could have done, um, in my, my opinion. So that was my, my thoughts on the design. That's why I'm not really too much into it. Um, but one of the things I am happy about is I'm happy about the technology they put in there. I'm happy about the, the tech that they put in in terms of finally integrating a steer by wire, which was supposed to go in this car. And like I said before, I think they rushed this car, the Model S Plaid, out prior to, to finishing that technology, um, as well as the Model X, because I think that should have had it. The Roadster definitely better have steer by wire uh, because it's, it's the future. Right. And as they realize it's the future by making it in the Cybertruck, they're probably going to trickle it down to other vehicles beyond that uh, in the future. So Tesla wasn't quite ready. I don't know if the chip shortage had anything to do with it, but they weren't quite ready. So they shipped this vehicle as is, they shipped the Model X as is. Um, and they also, uh, I don't think it was going to go on the Model 3 refresh, but at least uh, these vehicles, these higher value premium vehicles it should have gone into, especially if you're talking about having these high speeds, having a yoke, not having being able to have hand over hand the way you typically do. I think it makes a lot, lot of sense in that regard. All right, so um, that was my thought, my theory. Um, in, in that regard, in terms of the, the, the yoke and steer by wire, but a lot of the other technology is there. I, I feel like it's being a little bit overhyped right now uh, in terms of people who've seen other Tesla products. Everyone just totally craps on the Model X. I love the Model X. I think it's the best, most comfortable Tesla you can buy. Um, and having seen the Cybertruck, it has a big piece of glass, but it doesn't go past your head like the Model X. It doesn't give you that helicopter perspective like the Model X. Um, so in that regard, it's not the same experience. Oh, it's the biggest, biggest, best visibility I've ever seen. Not really. Uh, Model X gives you way better visibility, I think, uh, in terms of it being able to see above you better. The model, the Cybertruck has the, uh, the what do you call it? The um, visors at the top that kind of block the, the, the visibility. The same way that the Lucid Air does it, where they block the visibility by putting the visors up there. So, you know, a little bit of overhype. But, um, you know, we'll see how it does. We'll hope it hope it's successful. Hope it does its thing. Hope it uh, performs well. Obviously, it's a lower priority for Tesla in terms of the volume. But, you know, we'll see. I think we're here. Just going to see if I can pull into a parking spot here. All right. So I'm going to continue those thoughts in another video. We ran out of time here. Um, but this was our drive FSD beta 11.4.9 end of 2023 quick thoughts on the cyber truck as well. Um, letting you guys know how I feel about that. And, uh, yeah, let me know what you think about this drive. Let me know what you think about this build. If you have it 11.4.9, everybody should have it by now. So we're all caught up to speed and the next sort of divergence, if you will, now that we had a convergence of code, uh, should be the divergence of having, um, FSD beta version 12 for the first wave early access owners to be able to test. I'll be back with that video very shortly whenever it comes out. 
And until the next time, enjoy your day. Enjoy your Tesla.